One of the most exciting chess tournaments happening right now is the Clash of Claims, which features Vladimir Kramnik, former world champion, legend of the game, playing against Jose Martinez Alcantara, very strong chess player too. This is taking place in Spain, and the reason why this is such a special tournament is because it's it's something that we've never seen before. It's Kramnik who accused Jose Martinez Alcantara of cheating, and they're playing together to prove, well, Jose Martinez Alcantara is proving that he didn't cheat. We're gonna analyze the day two of this tournament. Let's go. So far, we've analyzed day one of this tournament. Today, we're going to analyze day two, of course, but there was a problem. So there was some sort of suspension or 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 misunderstanding du during day one in which Kramnik wasn't very happy about something. And um, as a result, I'm going to start analyzing day two on game 13. I don't know what happened to the other games. This is what I what I know. This is what is on the website on chess.com website, so we're going to start with game 13. With the white pieces we have Martinez Alcantara, with the black pieces we have Vladimir Kramnik. The game started with e4, e6, pawn to d4, pawn to d5, the French defense, knight d2, c5, knight f3, knight c6, everyone's developing their pieces, occupying the center, and supporting their own center as well. e takes d5, e takes d5, bishop b5, and queen e7. So this is one way of approaching this position as the black pieces. In this position, if white wants to play something dynamic and and ambitious, white has to play bishop e2, which looks like a little bit weird. You would think that, well, David, your bishop just went out. Why would you put it back? Um, the reason why, why bishop e2 is played is because if you play something like queen e2, which is the only other reasonable alternative, um, queen takes e2, king takes e2, a6, black is fine. There's no real um, there's no real slight advantage for white, which if you're familiar with openings and with chess in general, Normally white wants a slight edge. On top of that, this bishop cannot survive over the board. If you play bishop d3, you get trapped with c4. Same thing with b5 and c4. So you have to play bishop c6. And on top of that, black has the bishop pair. So black is absolutely fine. Bishop 2 is played. Knight f6, castles, queen c7 to get this bishop out. c4, c takes d4, knight b3, bishop b7, knight takes d4. Many people would think that white is better because of the isolated pawn. The reason why this is not such a big deal is because, first of all, the isolated pawn is going to leave very soon. And second of all, this knight on b3 is a little bit awkward. Um, that's why knight takes, knight takes, c takes d, knight takes d5 happened, hoping for some knight d4, maybe putting pressure on the c6 pawn. But white played queen c2, which is a, bit of, a little bit of a weird... Um, it's absolutely fine objectively, but it's a little bit of a weird human approach. Um, bishop d2 and rook c1 was a little bit more uh, natural. But okay, queen c2 happened, knight b4, queen c3. Now this queen on c3 is going to get attacked. This queen in general is going to attack, get attacked several times. Pawn to a5 happened, pawn to a3, bishop f6. As I said, this queen is going to get harassed over and over. If you play something like queen c4, don't be surprised if bishop a6 is played. Now this is a little bit of a problem. If you play queen e4, rook e8 is coming. So queen c5 is kind of forced. Bishop e7 happened, queen c3, players repeated moves for a second, white is saying, well, I'm, I would be happy with the draw, but black said no, no thank you, knight d5, rejecting the draw offer, queen c2, this queen is not well placed on c5, it's going to get attacked again, so you want your queen somewhere far away, where it's not gonna get harassed. Queen b6 was played, knight d2, looking for knight c4, as I said, this knight is a little bit awkward on b3, so players are looking for the best and the optimal squares for their pieces. Rook b8 putting pressure on the weak b2 pawn. Knight c4 was played. Queen c5. Bishop d3. H6 because this is this sorry this was attacked of course. So our reactive move. If your opponent attacks something, it's very logical to defend. Bishop d2 was played. Finishing development development finally targeting the a5 pawn. Bishop a6. And now this is indirectly defending the the a pawn because they're because of the pin. Um, but in this position, White played rook a c1. Which is fine, it's it's developing pieces as well, it's putting the, the rook in the semi-open file. But in this position, white had a very good chance of playing b4 and activating the rook in another way. So now you pretty much have to take, take. And you pretty much, so it's, once again, you, you've activated the a file, the, the rook in the a file, because the a file is open. And I think the reason why why white rejected this is because there, it's, it's a little bit weird. There's some pressure here. Of course you can't take because you're going to lose a piece. Um, so it works tactically, and in fact, in this position, Black has to play Queen A7 to equalize, which is a little bit difficult to spot. Um, there's some so there's some line with Rook takes A6, which we're not gonna uh, uh, analyze in detail because we have we have to analyze the whole game. So Queen takes E4, Queen takes E4, Rook takes E4, Rook takes B2. White sacrifices a pawn momentarily and get gets it back. 
but now white sacrifices a pawn for real. Um, now, what white is claiming is, well, this is an open position, I have the bishop here, it's not such a big deal. And in fact, it is not a big deal. The problem is that eventually, after some more moves, um, we still have the bishop here as white, of course. You you are playing this slow moves improving, there's not much you can do. This kind of position is like, well, slowly improving, trying to tickle your opponent, poking a little bit. I would say that Vladimir Karamnik has to be careful, because if Karamnik loses the c6 pawn, which is the only reason why you would give your opponent a bishop pair, then then black would be in trouble. But the c6 pawn is alive after something like g5, h5, which is kind of asking questions in the in the king's side. What is what are you going to do with your structure? King g7, rook c2, 97 is played, and it's very clear that this pawn is pretty pretty well defended. Bishop b4 was played, rook e6. White doesn't want to trade everything because white is still hoping for this would be a very easy draw. Uh, but white is still hoping for, for the bishop pair to get active, so plays bishop g4. Attacking the rook, the rook moves. Bishop e2 attacking this other rook. Rook a1, and things get a little bit tactical, so people, or players, sorry, trade pieces. Bishop d4, bishop f3, rook e1 check, king g2, and c5. So in this endgame, white is pretty much saying, okay, I'm going to trade here, I'm going to trade there, and it's going to be a draw. But black sees one opportunity and plays c5. Now, why is this an opportunity? Because after bishop takes e5, you do lose the pawn, but now you transform the position into a king and knight, sorry, king, well, I wish it was a rook and knight as black against rook and bishop, which might be tricky in blitz game. I remind you, this is, these games are very quick, so if you're playing with a knight, it's more, it's more likely your opponent's going to blunder something if you're, if you're playing with seconds. So knight g8 played, g4, knight f6, luckily for white, in this case, the structure is pretty, pretty solid. You don't have to worry about the knight too much. And I've took, after a couple more moves, the game ended up in a draw. Game 14 was interesting. This is the first um, decisive result of the day. Uh, now we have with the white pieces Kramnik, with the black pieces we have Martinez Alcantara. D4, D5, C4, E6. Knight F3, Knight F6. This is what Kramnik has been playing so far in the match. The Catalan opening, G3. Bishop B4, Bishop D2, and Bishop E7. So... Many people would get confused about this little maneuver or this this, this 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 sequence of moves. Why would you play bishop before check? So now this bishop is out. Well, the reason why you want this bishop on d2 is that, believe it or not, this bishop on d2 is more of a weakness than a strength. So it would make sense that you... Originally, I used to think, well, this bishop on d2 is slightly better than on c1. But that's not that's not true. You will, you will see why. Bishop g2, castles, queen c2, knight bd7, castles, and knight e4. So this is the reason. Black is... Black is claiming that this bishop on d2 is going to get taken, black will be able to have the bishop here, and that's going to be very important for black. So that's the strategical idea of bishop b4. That's one of them. Another one of them is that normally white wants to play sometimes b3, bishop b2. Um, and this bishop, believe it or not, is once again slightly worse on d2 than on c1, and c1 is a little bit more flexible. Knight c3 was played, knight takes d2, knight takes d2, c6, e4 was played occupying the center, dc, Knight takes e4, knight b6, knight takes, queen takes, and this is this is all theory. People are still in their well, players. I keep saying people. Players are still in their opening books. Rook a d1 was played a little bit of a a little bit of a surprise already. So um, rook f d1 has been played far more for rook a d1, but after rook a d1, this position has never been played before. Uh, actually, sorry. Yeah, it has been played before, but if with e5, rook d8. Now the position has never been played before. E5. There. There's one game in the database, after d takes e5, bishop g4, uh, sacrificing a pawn momentarily, getting the bishop uh, bishop here active, which is a good good deal for just a pawn. But rook d8 was played by Martinez Alcantara, and that now this, this is where we have a new position. Knight e4 was played, queen, c, uh, queen a5, e5. What happens often is that if you're playing against the bishop here, you want to put your pawns in the color of the bishop you're missing. In this case, you have the light square bishop, the bishop you're missing is the dark square bishop, so that's the one that your opponent has, and you don't. So you want to put pawns on dark squares so you can neutralize this bishop. Bishop d7 happened, knight c5, queen c7, h4, bishop e8, and rook d3. So you can notice that white has made some progress, kind of in the middle, kind of on the queen side, because of this closed structure. You want to close the structure, so bishops are not so good. Now, it is true that after rook a c8, it's not so clear for white to break. It is slightly better for white. But after this knight e4 move, black played h6, which is already a little bit of an inaccuracy. 
Black had the chance to play c5, which is a, what we call a, a freeing move. So now you get to, to free up the bishops, and this should be good for Black. Of course, everything's equal according to the engine, but um, h6 is absolutely fine. It's objectively equal. But if you can play c5 and get your pieces active as Black, you would like to do that. In fact, in this position, after rook c3, queen b8 makes sense getting out of this pin. d takes c5, rook takes, queen takes, queen takes c5. White has to find c6. So if, if white has to find this kind of moves already, then it means black is doing well. Um, bishop takes e6 um, is the best move. And after queen c2, once again, very difficult move to find. Kind of claiming that, well, if you move this, of course you lose. And if you move this, then there's going to be pressure. Something like this, a knight of 6 is already winning. Um, then white would be, th this would be a balanced position after bishop c5. But white has to find all of these. Instead of that, black played h6, as I said. A3 was played, and now c5 happened. Now, instead of a3, white could have prevented c5 with knight c3. So now if c5, you play d5, and this is a little bit of a watch out. Here it comes. But uh, a3 was played, c5, d takes c5, rook takes d3, and black manages to trade pieces like this. So black is finally getting some activity. Queen a6 happened. We're, we're attacking, sorry, we're attacking that. Queen b8, defending the rook. Knight d6. Uh, very annoying move, getting getting into the black position, b4, and all of a sudden black did get a little bit active, but it didn't last too long. So Martinez Alcantara is struggling a little bit now, c takes d6, now you have to worry about this pawn, rook takes d6, rook takes d6, queen takes d6, queen takes d7, Ver good sequence of moves, it is objectively equal, but the problem for black is that in this endgame, you're a little bit worse because of this, this possibility of creating a passed one with with the a pawn so black tried king f8 which is absolutely fine bishop f3 g5 hg hg trading pawns is usually a good way or a safe way to play a position uh, if you feel like you're slightly worse trading pawns is a good way of, of sorry a good plan normally king g2 was played bishop d7 and a4 starting this to, to march this so to, to move the pawns forward and trying to promote them, of course. And after this, bishop c6 was played, which is a little bit of an inaccuracy. It's absolutely fine, objectively, shalala, shalala. But this is a little bit of an inaccuracy. Why? Well, black should have played g4. This is kind of closing some, some escaping squares for the white king, so it's, it's a little bit worrying as white. White has to find bishop a8. King g7, getting out of this potential checks. a5, trying to create this um, pass pawn we were talking about. And now you can play bishop c6. Why? Because after bishop takes, queen takes check. There's no way for white to push for a win anymore. King g1, you can try queen c1 check, king h2, queen c2 attacking the pawn, and you're going to say, David, um, what, what if white just takes this? Uh, this is just a free pawn. Well, now this is a draw. Queen h7 check, king g2, queen e4, queen, king g1, queen b1. So there's always going to be a check, either on h7, on e4, or on b1. This is what we call perpetual check. So the game would end, end up in a draw. Pretty happy for black, because black was dealing with these two pawns and if one of those pawns promote which i don't want to spoil you the game but if one of them promote then it's game over so um that that was um that was one way of trying to with white if white tries to play king g2 there's also checks check check and it's a draw so g4 was a little bit better but bishop c6 was played by black and now after takes takes king g1 king g7 a5 it's still a draw but white has Black has to fight Queen C2. Once again, getting this kind of E4 H7 perpetual check system and method. But um, for instance, you can try B6, but after this, um, once again, white gets to this perpetual thing, and eventually white, if white wants to push for push her for a win, white has to play F3, which would be weakening the king, and it's going to be more difficult to, to win this overall. But uh, B takes A5 was played in this position, and now this is losing. Just like that. Because this pawn is now very quick all of a sudden. This pawn is in the 5th rank. It only needs 1, 2, 3 more squares to go. And black is not in time to create enough enough, enough perpetual check threats. For instance, if you go queen h6, then king g2 and there's no more checks. I mean, there's queen h3, but king g1, there's nothing. Um, and black is not in time. The, the white pawn is too quick. After a couple more checks, Kremnik managed to play queen d8. Queen d1 is still not possible. There's no more checks for black. And black resigned after f4.
which doesn't make sense. Why would you make a... Okay. Game 15, now Martinez Alcantara is playing with the white pieces. Kramnik is playing with the black pieces. E4, we're going to get to this French defense once again. Knight C6, E takes D5, E takes D5, Bishop B5. Everything's so standard by, by now. This is what they've been playing so far. Bishop B2, once again, if you play Queen E2, this is a little bit not very ambitious for, for, for white. This A6 move is a little bit annoying. So Bishop B2 is played. Knight F6, castles. Queen C7, C4 opening up the position. Knight B3... That knight is going to suffer a little bit, so black is object. Black is pretty happy with this outcome. Black is getting this equality, and um, I think I think eventually we do see it uh, in day three. But Martinez Alcantara is going to change this approach because if black is getting equal equality very easy, then your job as white is kind of failing. You want a little bit of a small edge. C takes d5, knight takes d5 was played. A3, different to what, what was played before. Queen c2 was tried by Martinez Alcantara in the previous games. But a3, preventing this knight before, getting ready with queen c2. Rook b8, queen c2, queen b6, putting pressure on the b3 knight, knight d2. Which is more or less what you wanted to do anyway. Because you want to improve this knight. Knight f4 was played. Bishop c4. Um, normally you, you want to, to, to free up space. But this bishop on c4 is reasonably well in this diagonal. And the, the reason why bishop f3 wouldn't be so great is because of something like knight e6 and knight d4. Um, but yeah, bishop c4 was played, bishop e6, knight f3, takes, takes, knight g6. Knight e6 was an interesting, another way of playing, but knight g6 seems to be reasonable enough. This knight is now next to the king. Maybe knight e5 in the future is going to get uh, a chance. Not now, because the knight is on f3. b4, getting rid of this b2 weakness, although once you advance pawns you create other weaknesses of course so now a3 would be a weakness maybe a5 is going to get uh be a be a be problem be a problem for white in the future sorry queen b5 takes takes and after this the the position is kind of dry of course white is slightly better because white gets a little bit of momentum and what i mean with that is bishop b3 developing attacking a piece a6 was played rook ac1 rook a bc8 but what happens is that white is just slightly better but it's 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 still a little bit tricky to play as black. Why? Because this knight on g6, the reason why I wanted on e6, in e6 it would be slightly better. But on g6 is a little bit prevent uh, prevented. Okay, g3 prevents this knight from jumping to these squares. Knight e5 is not possible either. This knight is not very happy. Um, another thing, this bishop is slightly better than that bishop. Um, of course, this bishop is targeting these pawns, you can argue. But this bishop, once, once it gets to b6, for instance, which is what happened... A little bit annoying for black the rooks well the rooks we can't compare them too much it's it's pretty equal this shit there but there's a small edge because of this knight difference um because of that kremnik had to allow this this rook d7 infiltration rook c3 does happen so black does have counterplay on its own black does manage to get a pawn but white's pieces are more active and when you're giving up material for activity that's generally pretty scary to play in, the, in this case black is 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 a little bit has to be a little bit careful to 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 neutralize all this activity. Bishop f f8 was played. For instance, if you play something careless like bishop takes b4, which is still equal, but from the human eye it looks a little bit scary. Rook takes g7 would happen. Let's say king h8, bishop d8, f6 is hanging. You have to find bishop f8, rook b7, and this looks very scary for black. Bishop takes f6 is coming with check. You have to play king g8, and uh, I don't know this this. I mean, uh, I would be scared of getting checkmated in this position as black. So bishop f8, bishop c5 was played, and rook f3. In this position, um, black should have played a5. And after bishop takes f8, king takes f8, b takes a5. You are losing a pawn on g son, but you can, you can play actively against it. So you can play e5, not e5, sorry. The reason why this is defending g7 in a non-direct way is that if you take it, this would be a mistake now because of knight f3 check. King g2 and knight d4. Very nice sequence of moves. Um, I mean, you can argue that this, this endgame would be a draw, which kind of is after rook takes a5, but why would you want to do that as white? You're kind of a little bit uh, suffering. Uh, you had a pretty nice position. So after a5, bishop takes f8, king takes f8, b takes a5, knight e5. You can try rook, b, rook a7, sorry. And after b4, black is in time to create enough counterplay with the b pawn. So black is absolutely fine. But black played rook f3. Kramnik blundered with rook f3. Why? Because after knight e3, all of a sudden, this rook is 
rook is this rook is uh, struggling a little bit now i think what kremnik is, is was arguing is that this rook is never going to get taken for real because there's always 95 like, like even if king g2 king takes f3 95 would be a fork you're gonna take your opponent's rook but the problem is that this bishop is attacking f8 and rook d8 is an idea as well in this position so for instance f5 was tried i think kremnik already realized this was a blunder and after king g2 f4 rook a7 very important move if you take this 95 is going to be a problem of course so rook a7 now kremnik realizes this is a mistake bishop takes e5 was tried but after b bc 95 of course if you take king f3 you're absolutely winning as white 95 was tried protecting the the, the rook but after 9 g4 deflection you don't want this if you if you take this you're going to lose the rook of course so eventually kremnik had to give up the knight and i'm not sure why kremnik is playing this position i mean Playing this is, you can argue, uh, okay, you, you can, you can, you can not resign if you want, but eventually Kramnik resigned. Uh, Jesus Martinez Alcantara, sorry, Jesus, he's not, Jose Martinez Alcantara played very well. Na 97, sorry, 97 is a problem. King b8, rook d8 is mate. There's no real way of, of preventing that as black. You can try rook b1, but after rook f5, this, eventually you're going to promote and you're going to win the game. And then we have game 16, which is the last game of the day. With the white pieces, we have Vladimir Kremnik. With the black pieces, we have Martinez Alcantara. D4, D5, we're going to get to this Catalan opening, which we've seen so far. Bishop G2, castles, castles, knight BD7. Queen C2, knight E4, rook D1, which is different to what Kremnik was playing before. Kremnik played knight C3, and um, it was an interesting game after knight takes D sorry, knight takes knight C3, knight takes D2. That was an interesting game. E4 was played eventually. But rook d1 has a different approach. What's the approach? You want to play bishop e1. And then you're going to play more in the queen side. Now, black does have this grip on the e4 square that is very difficult to play against with the white against if you're playing with the white pieces. But Kremnik had had a find a good solution. Now it must be said that after a4, this is a completely new game. Knight c3 had been played before in my database, or that's according to my database, I should say. But a4, queen's at expansion has never been played before. And then knight c3, which I guess has some little details that I do not completely understand, if I'm completely honest. Knight c3, queen e7, e3 was played, g4. Black is claiming that th there's going to be a kingside attack, and white is saying, no, there's no kingside attack. I'm going to squeeze you in the queen side. I'm going to get an advantage over there, and you're going to suffer for 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 eternity. So knight d2 was played, h5 going for that kingside attack, b5 going for that queenside counterplay, h4, bc, bc, cd, cd, and now black has kind of a little bit of um, lack of activity in the in the queen side in general, and it doesn't look like the kingside attack is going so well. But what happens is that in this position, it's pretty good for white. In fact, if white plays something quite like rook dc1, white has a big advantage. And but Kremnik played knight takes e4, which is also a very big advantage. But this gets crazy. And if it gets crazy, you don't want that in a, in a blitz game, right? You want something calm that is going to be good and there's no craziness. But knight takes e4 was played, d takes e4, and queen takes e4. The reason why this is good for white, but a little bit... Uh, scary is because first of all you sacrifice a knight for two pawns second of all you have to know what you do against against this sequence of moves so white gave up a knight now for three pawns so white is winning but you have to play accurately if black gets active so knight f6 bishop a6 you're gonna get in trouble rook bc rook a b1 sorry was played and bishop a6 was played which is a mistake by jose martinez alcantara um jose martinez alcantara should have played hg hg knight f6 and now this knight is a little bit more active. Queen g5 can be played. Bishop a6. And um, in this position, um, in general, black is kind of holding. It's not losing right away. But bishop a6. Now, after rook takes b2, rook, rook takes b8, sorry, rook takes b8, white missed an opportunity. So it was a mutual blunder, mutual blindness, you can argue. Bishop h3 was a good move. The reason why this is a good move is because after bishop c4, there are not many ways of defending that pawn. You play rook c1 attacking the bishop, bishop d5, and e4. David, that bishop is attacked by the pawn, but what happens if we play knight f6? We attack the knight, that's black. Now you play queen f4 attacking the rook, and black is kind of in trouble. Um, but what happens is that after d5, which is what happened in the game, which is what Kramnik played, which is a mistake, you get 95 
which is a very good find by Martinez Alcantara. This is a very annoying move. The knight gets active in one single move, and after queen h5, queen f7, you, you kind of have to trade queens. And you don't want to do that. Black's king was more 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 in danger. Why would you like to trade queens if your, your opponent's king is in danger? Now, there were some trades, but after a couple more moves, we get to this very complicated position once again. And you don't have queens anymore, so the king can be on e6, chilling. But on top of that, you have to play, you have to keep yourself with pieces, because it, 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 the more pieces you have, the more likely it's going to be for black to be in danger. But what Kremnik played, which I don't understand very well, maybe it was time trouble, maybe it was uh, distraction, but Kremnik took on e5, which is a very big mistake. Bishop d4 was a little bit more resilient, attacking the a7 pawn. For instance, if you play, I think Kremnik probably rejected it because of knight d3. But bishop takes a7, intermediate move, intermenso, it's division, so there are many ways of calling this. Um, you're equalizing right away, because you're attacking the rook, so of course this, that, and it's equal. But bishop takes e5 was played, bishop takes e5, and now you're playing against the bishop pair. Once again, how many times have I, have I mentioned the bishop pair? The bishop pair is very, very annoying, I don't think people realize that. Um, rook c1 was played, attacking the bishop, bishop b3. After this, it was a little bit hopeless. Uh, Kremnik tried a little bit, but Jose Martinez Alcantara and these top players in general have very good... Um, ways of converting games you can argue that Kremnik is is still has still some hopes because of the pawns but the bishop pair just uh, there's no way to play against the bishop pair in this case Kremnik already blundered his bishop d5 move there was not many things you could have done um eventually this would have happened and yeah a couple of moves after that white is absolutely losing uh, as i said jose martinez jose, Mar jose martinez Jose, Mar Jose Eduardo Martinez Alcantara, sorry, uh, managed to, con to convert this very well, and after g5, a couple more moves later, the bishop pinned the rook, and Kremnik resigned. So after all of these games, Kremnik is winning the match with 7.5 points, and Jose Martinez Alcantara is just 1 point behind with 6.5. We'll see what happens in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.